Now back to Let's Chat with Tita Gracie, only here on V81 Radio. Okay, and we're back. Uh, and this is our last 15 minutes. And, uh, you know, Aww. Michael, uh, we've answered some of the quick fire questions over the last hour. But I think uh, I've got a still a few more here. Um, dream role that you successfully port- played on stage. What's that role? Um, my that would be Man of La Mancha as Don Quixote. Don Quixote. How about yeah. a dream role that you still have to play? Uh, that I still have to play. You know what? I don't have a dream role that I want to play. Um, th- that's so strange. But a lot of people ask me that, but I don't have one. I, you know, I there's. Uh oh, maybe, maybe. Maybe the male version of On a Clear Day. Of course, it had to be a Barbara Streisand role. There is a male <laughs> version. Um, yeah. But, maybe, but I'm too old for that, right? Yeah. Um, how about um, best comedic performance? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There is um, an awful play called Moose Murders. I play the role of a, a a throwback flower child who's always doped up, and his name is Stinky, and he <laughs> and he has he has an Oedipus complex, and they have a really weird family. It was a, I mean, you know, he, he, this guy's totally constantly doped up, right? And then he encounters the murderer. Who is pretending to be an evil monster, moose monster in the moose lodge, and so he encounters this moose in the lodge at night, and he totally freaks out. It's one of my favorite roles because the character is so whacked out, um, and 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 I remember the audience response to that was just hysteric. I mean, people were crying in their seats from laughing. That's I I enjoy that. You know, one of the things that I would wish to see more of is more comedy roles, comedy performance, yeah. Michael. Yeah. After this pandemic, I just want to sit down in a theater and laugh. I totally just- miss it. I miss it. I love playing in farces and comedies. I totally love yes. it. Yes. Totally love it. But maybe we yeah, should do I hope to see some of that you know, when, when theater comes back. To the new normal, at least. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> And then another thing, uh, one other quick question: Do you like playing the hero or the villain? You know, the villain is always much more fun. The yeah. hero, the romantic lead—they're always a little bit two-dimensional. You know, he falls in love, gets hurt, and then. Rises above it, ends up falling in love again. But the 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 villain, um, you know, I, I just it, it's just so much fun to play the villain, right? Uh, yeah. Although although uh, Javert wasn't a villain, he was a, a tragic character. Yes. So because but yeah, Javert, and then you re- um one of the plays that I saw you perform in, uh, Jekyll and Hyde. That was yeah. That that's was an amazing character. Oh, that was that was difficult, but but so much, um, so much enjoy, so much enjoyment uh, to to play that. I, I we had no idea how is how I was going to to do that that scene where he fights with himself. You know, yeah, when you fight with yourself, that was an amazing yeah. scene. That that's that was. Uh, But you know, there's there's a point in the rehearsal where it starts to happen by itself, you know, because you're working these two characters, and then when you get there, you kind of know that that's oh, that's this is how he's gonna say it, and this is how that other person's gonna say it, and then and and then it it, it just takes over you, and it bizarrely happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, another thing, would do you like? Being a director or being on stage as an actor, what would be at this it point? It depends. In- it depends. Uh, I I I would like to work with actors that I, I mean, as a as an actor, 
I would like to work with actors that I trust um, and can have fun with on stage and work under a director that um, trusts me and yeah. and and can and and can allow me to to play <coughs> and and I would like to be to direct um, in yeah. the same in the same vein. I would like it, see it's two different things. You see, um, the, the the difficulty of being a director is at some point you gotta let go and let the actors take over. And you gotta trust them, and it's in that part that I have the most difficulty. Yeah. You know, when you've done the most that you can, and it's already opening night, and you can't do any more, although you think you want to, right? Yeah. But that's why they say theater is an actor's medium, because when the actor gets yes. on there, that's, that's, yeah, so it's different. I How about both. acting on film, Michael? How about uh, on film? I never got my head around uh, acting for film. I, I tried TV. I did a TV tennis area before. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I prefer the, the, Why? throughput of theater when you open the show you go through your dramatic arc all the way to your end um doing a doing a film you you know okay cut we're gonna do this uh, this particular scene and it's not necessarily in chronological order emotionally so you have to do a lot of revving up and rethinking where you are what what's already transpired there's a lot of a lot of that um thinking yeah how about um, for uh, Resorts World other than El Bimbo? Because that sort of, prior to that, you were doing mostly Western plays like mm -hmm. Chitabang Bang and um, Annie and um, what's that? Cinderella. Sound Cinderella. Music. And then you did Ang Huling El Bimbo, which is completely worlds apart from that. Do you see? Um, uh, productions that are inspired by local literature or local uh, music or you know like it seems to be a trend now because after El Bimbo uh, another production company did the songs of Apple right, right. and do you think that there's a general trend and agents yeah. right? the group yeah. of uh, Peta yeah, was a with uh, AG songs yeah, there is a trend, yeah. Uh, but but if you if you look at the early '30s and '40s, a lot of the Cole Porter stuff was like that. Um, the the song "Embraceable You," for example, makes yes. an appearance in two different productions. One called "Very Warm for May," and then something else. But it features that same song. So they used to do these musical review type shows with the very um, thin storyline uh, threading through them. Uh, yes. You know that 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 that's a that's commonly done in theater. Uh, then of course you have those other productions that are, you know, uh, told from scratch. You create the story, yeah. you create the music for it. So, yeah. Uh, so, um, getting people to um, uh, appreciate new material uh, is 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 quite a challenge because uh, there are established uh, hits from uh, big theater productions abroad that are now touring here in the Philippines. Right. Uh, we've the likes of Phantom of the Opera and Cats and um, Wicked King, uh, all right. being uh, played and all that. So what is the effect of these foreign productions and competing with your venue and your production company vis-a-vis Rep, what what do you think is going on? How does uh, it affect? You know, uh, well, it, it affects us in several ways. Um, the good side of it is that the people don't have to fly out to watch yes. the shows. They can see them, right? Um, there, the the negative side of that is that sometimes the little, the smaller companies, the you know, there's a limited pool of. Um, corporate support or sponsorship that is available to theater. And always the thinking is still, oh, they're foreign, they must be good. So yes. they suck up they suck up a lot of the sponsorships, leaving 
hardly any for the local theater companies. Yeah, that's sad. So uh, that's one of the things that we still need to compete uh, with them for. But um, I think, you know, uh, the the audiences, local audiences are, are, are wisening up and they realize yeah. that, you know, the local talents are are just as good uh, and they, they're now patronize, uh, you know, giving their, their patronage now uh, to the local theater yeah. uh, community. So that's, that's a good thing. Okay. You know, Michael, we're down to our last two minutes. Would you no. believe? <laughs> oh, no. Well, I've enjoyed that? myself. You know, thank you, Michael. I really, really am so grateful that you have agreed to be part of the show tonight, episode seven. Here I am. I mean, this is, I'm also new at the game. <laughs> And I'm learning as, as I go, but, um, you know, we have a new normal and what's going on, I think it's a blessing that um, there is this avenue for us to get together, you know, yes. even if we're apart because of the social distancing and in a platform where we can share a common interest and love for theater with our audience and audiences that are not just here in the Philippines, but also abroad. So for our last minute, Michael, What's your message to the theater enthusiasts out there that are, you know, sad because all the theaters have gone dark and there are no performances. And um, as much as we can talk about theater, it, you have made the point that being inside the theater is really the unique experience that, that we desire for them. So any last message for our audience? Yes, I do. Um, look at what's available right now on the internet. A lot of theater companies are uh, providing their uh, their productions for viewing for free. Take advantage of that. Watch it all. Enjoy it while it's available. And then when on the other side, uh, we will all see you on the other side of this pandemic. And we're looking forward to um, a revitalized audience, a revitalized theater industry, um, raring to go and give you shows and more great performances. So we'll just bide our time and then we'll all be back sooner than you think. Well, my friend, be well, keep healthy, keep on whipping up more projects <laughs> in the future because we in the audience are really going to watch out for your return on stage, Michael. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to bring episode seven to a close. So come back next week, six o'clock. Remember, Let's Chat with Tita Gracie goes back live right here on V81 Radio. Thank you and have a good evening. Leading personalities, representative insights, relevant current issues all together in a meaningful and delightful conversations as your social barometer. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Sunday, 6 p.m. Hosted by breakthrough millennial boomer Gracie Venezuela. Let's chat with Tita Gracie. Only here on V81 Radio.